see Peru without needing to spend a fortune. Travel and lodging costs are quite reasonable. I spent less than $1,050 on my lodging during my 90-day visit to Peru. My transportation costs within the country totaled to be less than $275. Most excursions are also reasonably affordable, especially if you avoid the torts selling overpriced tours near bus stations and town squares. I'm providing some resource links in the description. Please add your own suggestions and questions in the comments. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and share. Most people fly into Lima International Airport to begin their visits to Peru. Barranco is one of the nicer parts of Lima with middle and high income residents. Nice parks, street art, restaurants, cafes, and bars. Additionally, there are two really nice microbreweries to visit. One near the town center called Barranco Beer Company and another only a few blocks away called Red Cerveceria. There are lots of hostels serving budget-minded travelers in Barranco as well. The Bridge of Sides is a very popular site and it crosses above the Baja de Banos, a stone walkway that runs down to the beach at the Pacific Ocean. I found Barranco and Miraflores both very safe and highly walkable. I managed to walk more than 10 miles a day a few times. A memorable day trip was to a large adobe and clay pyramid located in the Miraflores district. Mummies have been found and human sacrifice was practiced. However, only women were sacrificed at this site. Another great walk was from the main square of Barranco to the far end of Malacón, a two-mile strip of parks, gardens, and green space on the cliffs overlooking the Pacific Ocean in Miraflores. The park furthest from Barranco features gardens planted to resemble the Nazca Lines. Miraflores adjoins Barranco near the Museum of Contemporary Art. The museum features a large open park that is a great place to relax or eat lunch. Parque de Amor, the love park, has great views of the Pacific Ocean and the many surfers enjoying the waves below. You can also see a fancy restaurant on a pier. Nearby is Parque John F. Kennedy with many friendly roaming cats and a nice gathering of food carts in the evenings. There are many nice coffee shops and restaurants in Miraflores and quite a few fancy hotels. I gather some are quite affordable. This part of Lima feels quite upscale. Paracas. South of Lima on the coast is Paracas and the Palisades Islands. Wildlife is a big draw for the islands and the national park with its sea lions, penguins, and many seabirds. Guano is still collected from a couple of the islands. Access to the islands is greatly restricted, but boat tours are available. The town of Paracas is small and walkable, but has a lively waterfront with restaurants and bars to serve the tourists. The seafood is very fresh and the prices are fair. Inca. Ica is the closest city to the oasis Hawakachina, just five kilometers away. This former private resort features a beautiful oasis surrounded by tropical trees in the midst of a desert and giant sand dunes. For a small fee, you can enter the park. As I recall, the fee was close to $1. Better deals for lodging and food can be had in Ica than Hawakachina. Ica even has a nice mall, multi floors, it's pretty big. Nazca. Nazca is a small town with no nightlife. It is possible to see almost everything there in one day. The highlight of this stop, of course, is the Nazca Lines. Pro tip for the best deal go directly to the airport to buy your ticket for the flight over the Nazca lines. It is best to book morning flights for the best views and least 
turbulence. Price at airport is $50 to fly over lines, but exactly the same trip is sold for $100 in town. A taxi to the airport only costs four or five soles. Other sites seen near Nazca are the pyramids and aqueducts. The pyramids were an important pilgrimage site between 1 AD and 500 AD. The subterranean aqueducts are best visited in person to really appreciate, but they can be seen from the plane while you're viewing the Nazca lines. Arequipa, also known as the White City, has a nice climate and is well located for taking excursions. There is a rather large expat community and likely as a result, the city features quite the craft beer scene. Plaza de Armas is flanked by government buildings, a church, and nice restaurants with a rooftop bar to enjoy sunsets. The Mirador it is a nice walk from Plaza de Armas and has rewarding views. Plaza Campo Redondo is the center of the craft beer scene in Arequipa. Nowhere Cerveza Artesanal and Cerveceria Barbarian both feature impressive craft beer selections on tap in one of the oldest neighborhoods of Arequipa. There are other craft brewers nearby as well as quite a few nice restaurants. Puno. Puno is located on the shores of Lake Titicaca near the Bolivian border. Lake Titicaca is the highest navigable lake in the world. The altitude is high and the weather is cold. The floating islands of Urus are rather cold and damp. As a result, the average life expectancy of the people that live on the floating islands is 60 years and arthritis is common due to the harsh conditions. The climate on Tequila Island is much warmer and more pleasant. The island has many ancient terraces still in use. A nearby archaeological site contains funeral towers overlooking a volcanic basin filled by a big lake. Cusco is a safe and very walkable city in spite of 400,000 residents. Plaza de Armas features a full court press of high pressure sales by vendors, artists, and tourists. You can literally buy anything in Plaza de Armas despite the heavy police presence. However, it is possible to get better deals on tours elsewhere. Nearby Plaza de Armas is the Inca Museum with interesting artifacts and information. Be sure to accept the services of a guide to improve your visit. Nearby you will find the 12 Angle Stone. Also close to Plaza de Armas, you can find some local craft beer and the Pisco Museum, which is more of a bar to a museum, but it's very interactive and has lots of great information about the history and process of making Pisco. Patty's Irish Pub is frequented by expats and the owner claims it is the highest Irish pub that's Irish owned. When you've had enough time to enjoy the colonial architecture 
and heading up into constant sales pressure of Plaza de Armas, take a walk to the San Pedro Marcado. The Marcado has food booths, fresh fruits, vegetables, cheese, meat, many artisanal crafts. You are also likely to find better deals at San Pedro in the market than at Plaza de Armas. Also note the train station across the street from the market should you desire to take the train to Machu Picchu. Also a short walk from San Pedro is the Covenant of St. Francis that features interesting catacombs much worth a visit. The remains of the Inca Sun Temple was partially raised by the conquistadors before building a church upon it. The original stonework is still quite impressive and visible. The neighborhood of San Blas is certainly worth the effort to visit. It's a long walk uphill on stairs. There are several nice restaurants. Check out the review I made of my stay at Casa de Mirador in San Blas. It has great views as the name implies. Overlooking Cusco, you'll find the ruins of Sexe Woman. Many of the stones were too large for the conquistadors to raise or carry away, so quite a bit of this important cultural site remains. This stonework is seriously impressive. You have a couple of choices when buying your ticket for entry. If you plan to see other sites, the more expensive ticket might be a better deal at just 130 soles. This ticket grants access to several sites. At the time of my visit, this ticket cost me $32.50. If you are pressed for time and don't plan to visit other places, there is a cheaper seven day soles ticket. It's only good for entry to four locations as I recall. Do consider hiring one of the official guides present at the site. Often you can find them at the gate. It will add a lot of information and context to your experience. Don't forget to tip your guide. Take some more time after your tour to enjoy the site. Walk about the nearby overlooks before you return to town. Urubamba is a pleasant town located in the Sacred Valley. It is easy to visit many archaeological sites located nearby simply by accessing the local bus station. Generally, it will cost you less than $2 to reach any of these sites. You can easily find official guides located near the gates of the archaeological sites. The same ticket you already bought for Sexy Woman in Cusco will provide free entry for up to 10 days of purchase to many of the nearby sites. I found the terraces at Chinco Hidro to be particularly impressive even compared to Machu Picchu. Another awesome town that is often referred to as the oldest living Inca town, ancient terraces and grain storage buildings dot the landscape. Many of the structures are still used throughout the valley for food production today. While you are visiting Oyenda Tambambo, be sure to spend some time at the Plaza de Armas and enjoy the mountain views and quaint restaurants. The Sacred Valley has no lack of quality beer due to the great water quality. Many local crafts are sold in the markets and on the street here. However, the crushed vendors is not nearly as bad as Cusco's Plaza de Armas. You will actually be able to enjoy eating along the streets with far fewer disturbances from torts and vendors. The town of Mars is a quick and affordable bus ride from Orobamba. However, you will need to negotiate with a taxi driver for rides to the sites of Moré or the salt mines, or maybe join an existing tour group near the bus stop. Moré is a place where the Incas experimented with crops. The descending terraces form an amphitheater-like structure with up to 15 degrees Celsius difference between the upper and lower levels of the terraces. Soil was brought to Moray from many different parts of the empire. Combined with the different climates that the terraces provided, the soil made it possible to mimic other regions of the country. 
The ancient salt spring and pools that make up the salt mine are quite impressive near Mars. There are overlooks along the road that approaches the salt mine, much worth a pause to take photos at. It is possible to trek back to Urubamba after visiting the salt complex. You will see signs to help facilitate this. From the Plaza de Armas of Urubamba, it is a reasonable hike to the overlook Tanta Marca. The scenery and fresh air can't be overstated. Along the route, you will see ancient irrigation works still in use to this day. Urubamba, located in the Sacred Valley of Peru, hosts the best craft beer brewery I have found in Peru. The Cerveceria has modern equipment and the best IPAs I have found in South America. The other styles are impressive as well. The private beer garden space is very chill and inviting. The beer is kindly priced at only 12 soles each, about $3 at my time of visiting. I highly recommend this frugal and rewarding stop to experience quality craft beer. You will meet more locals than gringo tourists at this cerveceria that is family owned. During future trips to Peru, I plan to spend more time in Urubamba and less in Cusco. I found Urubamba more affordable and livable than Cusco. I also appreciate many of the locals I met while visiting the local beer garden in Plaza de Armas. It's a very friendly town. Machu Picchu, finally the place most people think of first when visiting Peru, Machu Picchu. You can choose between trekking or even scenic train rides to Aguas Calientes, the Pueblo of Machu Picchu. You can catch the train easily in Cusco at the San Pedro station or take an inexpensive bus to Ollantubango to catch the train there. My trip occurred during the beginning of the rainy season and the river was raging. Aguas Calientes has many hotels and hostels and restaurants to serve the many tourists making treats there. It is a tourist town, period. Tickets to enter Machu Picchu should be purchased in advance. I would suggest at Cusco, if not online, further in advance. Bus tickets from Aguas Calientes to the gate of Machu Picchu are bought in town generally one day in advance. It is easy to find official guides while waiting to buy your bus tickets. Hiring the right guide can greatly improve your visit to Machu Picchu. So chat with the various guides and choose the one that fits your needs. Machu Picchu itself is very inspiring, awesome views. It's a must make trip. Check out my video about it in particular if you'd like to see more. In closing, I made quite a few other videos along the way during this trip that you can view on my YouTube channel. If you stuck around this long, please give the video a like and share it with your friends because obviously you dug it to watch this long. As always, subscribe, join the tribe, and come rapping with me this summer. Peace out.